welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today we're going to take a box cake and we're going to turn it into a semi-homemade cake. When you don't have the time to slave in order to make a cake, but you have a lot of guests that are coming to your home, this is going to be the perfect dessert to serve. Here are the ingredients that you're going to need to make this delicious semi-home cake. I've chose chocolate as my brand or cake flavor, so I have two boxes of chocolate cake mix and I'm using Duncan Hines product. I have cooking oil, eggs, water. The two ingredients that you're going to add in order to make this delicious cake is going to be Hershey's cocoa and black coffee. That's right. Those are the only two ingredients that you will need to turn this from being a just regular box cake into a semi-homemade, very delicious tasting chocolate cake. So, I'll meet you at the mixer. Okay, now I'm at the mixer and I've already added the two boxes of cake mix that I have sitting over here to the side. I've already added them. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my coffee, which is one cup of coffee, and I'm going to pour it in with my one cup of water because you actually need two cups of liquid. Now I'm going to start my mixer and I'm going to pour. Just wanted to look and make sure that I was at two cups. Now I'm not just pouring it real real fast in I'm just allowing it a chance to mix as I pour. Now, the good part about this cake that, you know, I want you to know is that this cake, the longer it beats, the fluffier it will get. So that means that we're going to overbeat this because we're going to beat it for about five minutes. Now, normally, if you're making a box cake, you would not beat it that long. You would beat it just long enough to mix the ingredients. And once you have mixed the ingredients, that will be the end of the mixing process. But I've found, you know, over the years as, as I've made this cake, that it becomes fluffier, it stands tall, and I'm going to be able to show you that because I'm going to cut a slice of it once I get it frosted, and then I'll show you exactly what it looks like. Now, you want to continue to beat that... Um, cake batter and while it's blending you want to add two heaping tablespoons of your Hershey's chocolate or any type of chocolate that you might look use that you you know really care for and since I'm not using a measuring spoon I'm gonna go strictly by just eyeballing it Okay, now once you add that, then you want to go ahead and start to add your oil. Once you get everything mixed in, then you want to add your eggs one at a time. So once you get your cocoa cake batter or cake mix and your oil, water, and coffee blended well together, then you want to add your eggs one at a time. Now you're going to use the package instructions on whatever cake mix you have decided to use. Like I told you, I'm using Duncan's, Duncan Hines. So all you do, if you're going to use two boxes like I've used, because this is going to be like a fourth of a sheet. I'm making a fourth of a sheet, just a plain single layer cake and I'm going to serve it from the pan. But you want to add your ingredients. So whatever ingredients is on one box, then you want to add it to the ingredients that's going to be on the second box, and that's how you're going to get your measurements. So at the bottom of the tutorial in the, in the description box, I'll just state follow package instructions. And that'll be the cake box package instructions. Now we're going to start to add our eggs one at a time. 
Now, why do you crack the eggs in a bowl and then you add them? Why don't you just add them from just cracking them down over into your blender? Well, or your mixer. The reason why you don't want to do that is suppose one of your eggs is rotten. If one of your eggs is rotten, then you're going to have to throw out the whole mix if you're cracking the eggs inside of the batter. But if you crack it inside of a bowl and you find out that one of them is rotten, you can just throw that part of it without, throw that part away without messing up all of your ingredients. Now after each, uh, adding each egg, you're going to go ahead and give it like about 30 seconds to blend and then you'll add the next egg. Now once I get all of the eggs into the batter, I'm going to go ahead and do a final scrape. And after I do the final scrape, then I'm going to allow this to blend together or mix together for about an additional four minutes. So it's about one, one and a half minutes that I've already mixed it and I'm going to allow it to blend for an additional amount of time. Now how simple was that? All of the ingredients are in, it's mixing well, and I'm telling you this will taste just like a homemade cake without you having done all of the fuss. And you don't have to make a chocolate, you can make it any type of cake that you want. Just make certain that you get all of that mixing time in. So it's at this point that I'm going to stop the blender or the mixer and I'm going to scrape down the bowl. Now you want to always scrape your bowl because you want to make certain that everything that may be trapped in the bottom that you've gotten it up so it can go ahead and mix together. And just to show you, see? See those little bit of dark and particles they were trapped in the bottom so you want to make certain that you're mixing up everything now once you've gotten all of that from the bottom let it back down and let it beat for three and a half minutes. So I'm going to go away, allow this to beat for another three and a half minutes. At the end of the three and a half minutes, I'll bring you back. You want to preheat your oven depending on what type pan you're using. And I'm using an aluminum pan today. So you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. Remember, follow the box instructions even when it comes down to what type pan you use and how many degrees you set your stove for. So, you want to preheat your oven to 350 degrees. You want to butter and flour or use a little cooking oil and flour. However it is that you coat your pan, you want to coat your pan. And the only thing we have to do now is just pour it up and put it in the oven. So, I'll bring you back when I get ready to go to that step. Okay, now I'm back. And actually, it's been mixing for about 10 minutes. But that's good because what it's going to do is it's going to fluff up even that much taller, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead, remove as much as the batter, as much from uh, the mixer of the batter as I can. That's really enough. Then I'm gonna take this out and I'm gonna go ahead and pour the cake into the pan. Now I'm telling you, don't knock this until you try it because this is going to be a real good cake. And you will truly enjoy it. If you're doing like a picnic or anything where you need to take something, this is the perfect cake to take.
and doing it was nothing. It's always good to invest in a spatula and I think that these spatulas are like two dollars because what they do if you will look inside of my bowl they're gonna get all of your mix see all of your mix is gonna come out of that bowl okay and I can clean it even a little bit more okay that's about good enough now I'm gonna put this in the oven again 350 degrees I'm gonna bounce it once why did I bounce it because you see those little bubbles those are air bubbles and what it does is it releases those air bubbles from the bottom so that you won't have those holes that you get sometime in your cake so I'll go away I'll cook this approximately 40 minutes and I'll bring you back when it's done Be okay right now we're back and I'm gonna take the cake out of the oven Okay, there it is. The cake is out of the oven. And I'm going to allow it a few minutes to cool. Once it cools, I'm going to frost it, bring it back, show you what it looks like. But see how tall it rised, and that's exactly what you want. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back, and the cake is frosted. And this is the way it came out. And the only reason why I took it out of the pan is because I want to show you the lift on the cake. See how high that cake has actually gotten. Normally, when you bake a cake... Um, like this it does not rise this high but because we mixed it and mixed it for so long that's why you got that high rise so what I want to do is I want to cut and this is a fourth of a sheet I used a fourth of a sheet pan cake is very moist none of that you have to worry about I'm going in the center and cutting it but we're gonna eat it all today anyway but I just want to cut it so I can show you exactly what this cake looks like on the inside okay look how tall that cake rolls okay that cake came out very well not only did it rise high look at it that cake is good and it tastes just like you've been baking all day in order to get this flavor try this recipe I think that you are truly going to enjoy this cake this is a real nice chocolate cake, and it can be used for any of your large gatherings, and you didn't spend a lot of money. You might have spent $4 all together. Okay, that's all that we cake. have for you today. Chris is making semi-homemade chocolate cake. And as always, thank you for watching. Chris Cook for you, too. Bye!